I'm joined by the General Secretary, Gideon Duplessis, uh, to discuss this further. Gideon, that was the biggest worry for me as well, this idea that they're saying they're going to look for more profitable opportunities elsewhere. Uh, what does this say about our mining sector? I mean, we've just come back from the mining in Daba, mm -hmm. calling for all this investment, and then this happened. Yeah, if you were, uh, nine months ago, when Anglo Gold Ashanti called us in Calvin Dushneski, the new CEO, and he indicated that if they look at the amount of money they need to invest to extend the life of mine to 2038, currently there's a seven-year life of mine, um, and if they take that amount of money and they invest it in their mining operations in Ghana, Australia, or in the Americas, they will get a much better return on investment. So the things that's obviously bothering them is, is ESCOM. Um, stage 6 in December caused the mining industry a lot of harm. They also... The mining industry is concerned about costs associated with the mining charter and the 30% um, ownership uh, element. But then um, it's also hinted towards labor unrest. Now, Anglo Gola Shanti always had very good labor relations, but in general, I know the labor environment in the mining industry is very robust. So those are the factors that's obviously seemingly chasing uh, mining companies and investors away. Yeah, and I mean, these factors that you've just mentioned aren't exclusive to Anglo Gold and Harmony saying no jobs will be lost. But the truth of the matter is that they are exposed to these risks as well. Uh, what kind of conversation have you had with them, if any? about the assurance that they've given? Well, the, the problem is if we look at the biggest mining company in the country, um, Sabanya Stillwater, and their CEO indicated uh, last week at the mining in Dawa when Neil Furnamon said, you know, they're not going to invest anything more in the current uh, investment climate is not conducive to further investments. If we look at BHP Billiton, uh, Rio Tinto, who all exited the country. We look at Anglo-American who have sold so many of the assets. South 32 are selling these assets. So in the end, it's up to, I think, government to convince investors and the mining companies that they will create the environment for them. We as unions have really learned our lessons that you can you can strike and negotiate members out of a job. And we had a meeting this morning, the three leaders of the three leading um, mining unions, and we said to each other, we need to make sure that we create a stable environment, but it's up to government to create the reg regulatory certainty. Yeah, and I'm glad you bring that up because I've spoken to many an analyst who say uh, that the unions are part and parcel of the troubles that are faced by the mining sector. Uh, surely these, un these actions that are unfolding now, as you say, will cause you guys to rethink uh, how you approach uh, uh, difficult situations. Yeah, absolutely. You know, um, we're also moving into the fourth industrial revolution, so we need to make sure that we don't fast-track automation or uh, mechanization or any of those processes for, for employers to avoid uh, any form of, of, of disruption of their workplace. The communities are also obviously an you know, enormous challenge. But um, for us as unions, uh, we definitely know and understand the role we need to play. But unfortunately, we also represent workers who also feel, you know, that they want to get their share of the cake. Uh, in, in the end, they give us uh, our mandate. But I'm um, coming back, you know, to the same issue. We need strong leadership in, within government. We need the political will to address all these issues that so many investors are concerned about. And the contribution that we as unions can make can obviously assist. But this is not the be-all and end-all, you know, to resolve the current challenges of the mining industry. And it's such a pity that the company like Anglo Gold Ashanti is exiting from this company because they really had very good standards. They, rate, they haven't had a strike for many years. Uh, so the end result is uh, we're losing a company that contributed to marine industry towards uh, their social and labor plans. They had a very good health and safety record, etc., etc. So... Um, but we nevertheless please with Harmony. They're also very committed to South Africa. They're also a company that haven't retrenched workers for nearly 10 years. So there's obviously a lot of confidence in them as well. Thank you very much for those insights. And I think another po important point will be the um, investment into skills development as you were speaking about the fourth industrial revolution.